finding the A segment car a little too small for the city or just somewhat too small for you, you have another option. You have the crossover SUV version. Youngsters out there, this is your dream car. Do not get me wrong. You will like it. Anyway, if you're worried about practicality, you get this huge space down here for some reason. And this is what I call passion. This is what I call the essentials of the A segment. Today's generation in the EU market, environmental initiatives have become very, very important. And there's two ways the automotive industry has gone about it. The first way is by introducing electric cars or other solutions like hydrogen fuel cells or hybrid technology. And then the other way they've gone about it was adapting to the market by creating models that are a hybrid between an A, B, C segment car and then a full-sized SUV or a full-sized family car. And this equally meant the high rise in demand for crossover SUVs. Now, there are many opinions about crossover SUVs. There are many, many thoughts about crossover SUVs. My personal belief about crossover SUVs is that they exist because of budgeting reasons, and also, they really give customers a variety of choices. In fact, the concept of crossover SUV was popularized by the North American market. But there's something very important we need to also establish. The Japanese companies, mainly Toyota, Nissan, and Honda, they popularized the crossover SUV segment. They grew because of the crossover SUV segment. They became famous because of the crossover SUV segment. And this is evident in the EU market. Next to me, everyone, is the Toyota Ego X. That's right, you heard me. Now, listen very carefully what I'm about to tell you all. This is a crossover SUV based on an A segment car, famously known as the Toyota Ego. The Toyota Ego is one of the most popular A segment cars in the EU market. Here in Belgium, it sells like hotcakes. You, once I be honest with you, I love the third generation Toyota Ego. It's, it's wonderful, very desirable, and they stepped up their game big time. Toyota had a reputation for being super reliable, but at the same time super boring to drive and to live with. But this reputation was turned over recently, everyone. They still maintain the reliability, but this time they've excelled in desirability. And it's right next to me, everyone. The desirability taken to a new level. Finding the A-segment car a little too small for the city or just somewhat too small for you you have another option. You have the crossover SUV version. All right, everyone, this Toyota Ego costs 18,000 euros. Is this good value for money or not? You know what, everyone? We're gonna find out in a moment. Let's get on with this review right now. It is a one liter engine, everyone. How amazing is that? Petrol, by the way. And another thing to note is that it's very cheap to tax, very cheap to insure, very cheap to live with, and also you get the Toyota reliability. And if reliability is your concern, you do get a lengthy Toyota warranty, a reliable Toyota warranty. Crossover SUV based on an A-segment car, do not worry. This car has just enough punch for acceleration. So speed is your thing, you chose the right car for you all. And youngsters out there, this is your dream car. Do not get me wrong, you will like it. Trust me, <clears throat> trust me, you are all gonna love it. I'm good to be honest, I prefer the normal Ego over the Ego X, but then, hey, the Ego X is just as, as but then, hey, the Ego X does have some desirability factors as well. So over here is the front design of the Toyota Ego X, everyone. Look at this. Look at this design right here. It looks very, very stylish. And in fact, it does ever so slightly resemble the Toyota Ego itself because the Ego has like a cross design at the front. I don't know if it's just me, but something about the front from this angle reminds me of the Toyota i Q. The Toyota iQ was an A-segment car built by Toyota many years ago. Uh, I do not know why exactly the Toyota discontinued the iQ, but it was a very... Okay, it was like a smart for two, but just Toyota. So I can assume only more reliable, but then at the same time, super boring to drive. Uh, this was the problem with Toyota many years ago, but now they really stepped up their game and this looks far more desirable. Well, these are some interesting headlights, guys. They look quite nice. Although when you see this sort of shape right here, it kind of reminds me of uh, something the PSA group would do, like Peugeot and Citroën, because he, now here's something interesting. 
the Toyota Ego was built previously in collaboration with the PSA Group, uh, but then this collaboration ended very recently. However, I don't know if it's just coincidence or maybe I'm just over analyzing. Uh, but then uh, this sort of headlight over here kind of reminds me of something uh, Citroen would usually do. But then. Maybe I'm wrong, please excuse me. This is the wheel of the Toyota Ego X, everyone. Looks very nice. Because this is a near base version, or I assume this is the base version, uh, you do get uh, those hubcaps, they look quite nice. And in fact, it reminds me of what you get on the Toyota Yaris. And then because this is a crossover SUV, a small crossover SUV, uh, you do get presence of hard plastic right here. Now, the presence of hard plastic is... Yeah, you all be the judge. This is the rear design of the Toyota Ego X, everyone. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but I find the rear design to be the most desirable of A-segment cars, especially with the Toyota Ego itself. The, the, the Toyota Ego and this Ego X, they really like having a, a piano black over here, which is basically part of the window. You know what I find really interesting, guys? Uh, despite it being a near base version and despite it looking visually like it's not a upper spec, you do get what looks like keyless entry, guys. Whilst exploring the exterior of this Toyota Ego X, I noticed some questionable aspects. Now, before I get down to questionable aspects, I just want to let you all know that this is a crossover SUV based on A-segment car. So I, so basically, naturally, some of you will think, what's there to question? There's no high expectations. Yes, you are absolutely correct. There is no high expectations. Price of 18,000 euros, um, I do have some expectations, some small expectations. Let's talk about those expectations I had right now. And let's talk about the questionable aspects as well. So the first questionable aspect I'd like to remark is that despite the price of uh, 18,000 euros, I would have expected some additional things. But Toyota over here did not include some lighting down here, which was optional, I believe. Uh, now, whether this is questionable or not, it can be debatable, but I personally was expecting something. Another questionable aspect I'd like to remark is that despite this Toyota Ego X being more expensive than the Toyota Ego itself, um, you, the, the exterior design looks more budget than the Toyota Ego itself. And that's all because of the hard plastic right here, everyone. I feel like the amount of hard plastic on the exterior is a little too much. It's, it's like this car is trying to prove that this is a crossover SUV, but then why do you need excess hard plastic everywhere? And a similar story goes on here, guys. I mean, the hard plastic is even more conspicuous right here. Now, there's another thing I just discovered, guys. Um, you do not get parking sensors at the front or at the rear, nor do you get parking cameras. Now, the absence of parking sensors on an A-segment car or crossover SUV based on an A-segment car can be debatable. It, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not very necessary to have parking sensors, I guess. Uh, and, and let alone, this is not even an upper spec. But then for a price of 18,000 euros, I did at least expect parking sensors at the rear. But then, yeah, it, it's again, it's debatable. This is the body paint and this is the A-pillar. For some reason, you get what looks like hard plastic over here. And this hard plastic has no purpose whatsoever. So I'm wondering, why wasn't this just part of the... Why wasn't this part of the A-pillar? Like, what's the point of this piece right here? Now, time to go in the interior of this Toyota Ego X. But before doing so, I'd like to point out something I really, really like. Look at this, guys. You get split handles right here. So, this handle is separate from the lock itself. And this is good because Toyota has a habit for making the whole handle... Uh, Toyota has a habit for having this whole handle open, like in, even this part gets pulled whenever you open it. Whereas here, everything is split, so this is good. I like this. So over here is the interior of the Toyota Ego X, everyone. Now, this interior looks very, very nice. Uh, first of all, I just want to point out how Toyota has a habit for having the infotainment system look very uh, different to the surroundings, whereas most brands tend to have an infotainment system that uh, goes by the surrounding. But this looks very interesting what Toyota did. So basically you have this infotainment system and all the infotainment system controls are right here only. Uh, and then you have this teardrop like design around it. Part of the interior reminds me of the 1990s or the early 2000s where hard plastic, which was round edged like this, always reminded, were always very uh, common. It, it was so common. Now this has to be one of the most interesting 
trusting instrument cluster I've ever seen, guys. And over here, you get your climate control. This is very good. I mean, this is the first time I've seen Toyota being a bit more organized with this area. But then I guess this is an A-segment crossover SUV, so it's very easy to work on it. Get a start-stop button, guys. This is so good. I mean, despite it being a near-base version, you at least do get a start-stop button to make it feel more modern. You do get a 12-volt socket right here, and you get a USB point. You get some storage down here, and you do get also cup holders right here. Nice manual transmission, guys. I really like the feel of it. Over here is your handbrake, everyone. And here you do get a cup holder, no central console storage. Now, the absence of central console storage is a very common practice for an A-segment car, so it's not even something to question. Over here, you do get a nice glove box, which is as good as it has to be for an A-segment car. The presence of hard plastic everywhere. This is a very common practice amongst A-segment cars, so it's not even something to question, in my opinion. I think this is perfect. I think it's good the way it has to be, but you do get mirror controls, by the way, so that's good. And you only get to open the front windows. You cannot open the rear windows. Windows. You get the steering wheel which is quite pleasant and uh, it has a very pleasant feel to it. I like the quality of the steering wheel. It's quite nice and easy to grip and then also you can hold it like this as well if you desire. But then on the steering wheel you do get some interesting controls. You get your media controls right here and you do get your driving controls right here including lane assist and cruise control. Another thing I would like to remark guys is how you get the presence of exposed metal right here. This is very good and it's actually quite stylish. It reminds me of the 90s. It's, it's very nice. You get this door bin, everyone, and this door bin is as good as it has to be for an A-segment car or A-segment crossover SUV. Um, I didn't have much expectations when it comes to practicality solutions. Um, but then when, if you're worried about practicality, you get this huge space down here for some reason. This is very interesting. This is the first time I've ever seen this actually. So it's quite nice. And you do get a proper hood latch right here, everyone. This is very, very good. Latch to open your fuel cap is right here for some reason. Huh, that's interesting. I, f I find it very difficult to find something questionable about this interior. Is it just me or for a price of 18,000 euros, I find this area over here to be a little bit empty? It's almost as if Toyota neglected this area. It's like there could have been an extra option or perhaps uh, this could have been transformed into a practicality solution. But uh, it seems Toyota hasn't done anything with this area. Now it's time to explore the rear of the Toyota Ego. But before doing so, I just would like to quickly point out that this edge of the door is very proud. Uh, so yes, you have to just watch out. But otherwise, the ease of entrance is unquestionable. And this is the rear seat of the Toyota Ego X. Um, I have very less space. My, my leg room is very limited. My knee room is basically dived into the front seat. Um, yes, so I just have to plead to the driver and the front passenger to be very generous and to move their seats front. And if they refuse to do so, then I believe that's... Uh, I guess I have to compromise. Mm. Toyota reliability does matter after all, doesn't it? I mean, look at this. There's nothing going on back here, which is... Okay, whether this is questionable or not, it's debatable when it comes to being an A-segment car, but then when it's a crossover SUV uh, based on an A-segment car and for a price of 17,000 euros, I would have expected some something, okay? Like maybe pockets here or maybe some something, some more activity going on, guys, because at the moment it's just... Yeah, I, I can't see anything special about this rear, and there's no door bin even. Like, literally, guys. There's no door bin at all. But otherwise, I forgot to remark something, guys, and that is the quality of the seats. The fabric is very, very good and very durable. And for an A-segment car, this is a common practice, and I believe it should be a common practice, because it's very easy to maintain and very, very easy to live with. And the way you open this rear window is with a latch right here, guys. Now, another questionable aspect I just have to point out, guys, is that you do have to watch out for this edge of the railing. So, yes, the railing for the driver's seat and the passenger seat as well at the front. So, the, the railings stick out very, very proudly and you can your legs can constantly make contact with this and you do not want that. It's time to check out the boot space of this Toyota Ego X. But before doing so, let's just admire the boot door, everyone. Look at this. Look at this. It's a very nice boot door and I like how stylish it is. And underneath that window you do actually get some metal. And I like the metal exposure right here. Look at this. 
This is so nice. I really, really like this. Now for a crossover SUV based on an A-segment car, uh, I have to say that uh, the boot space is as good as it has to be and I wasn't expecting much to be honest. Uh, there's no 12 volt socket for obvious reasons and I noticed this with the B-segment cars as well, so I'm not even going to question it. But you do get a beacon of hope lighting at least. So that's good. And you do get some hooks right here and right there. Now, there's no definite way of closing this rear door, guys. I mean, I don't know, should I just pull it from here or do I pull it from here? So, but uh, this door is super light that you can just pull it with one finger, guys. Check this out. Job done. So here's my conclusion of the Toyota Ego X, everyone. I believe this Toyota Ego X is a very promising debut of something new and something different. There are a variety of A-segment cars. We have hybrid A-segment cars. We have electric A-segment cars. And today is the first time I've ever seen an A-segment crossover SUV. Now, don't get me wrong. Maybe it's not the first time ever. I have to say massive amount of respect goes to Toyota for their acknowledging of their identity issues before. There was a time Toyota had a reputation for being boring and the Ego had a reputation for starting a stereotype unintentionally. Here in Belgium, the Toyota Ego had a stereotype and, uh, well, let's just say a stereotype of certain drivers and it was an infamous reputation because they would drive super slow on the roads. But then this reputation changed lately. The new Ego became more appealing to the young crowd. It became more appealing to everybody. But this time, Toyota realized that it's not enough to make the Ego just appealing. It's sometimes enough to make it also family friendly and more desirable in certain ways. And it's right here, everyone. The Toyota Ego X. Toyota decided to start a crossover SUV version to make it perhaps bigger and more spacious inside. So for a price of 18,000 euros, is this Toyota Ego X good value for money or not? You know what, everyone? I believe this Toyota Ego X is good value for money. I'm not about to tell you all this is the best value for money, but then I'm not about to tell you all otherwise. I'm not about to say, okay, value for money. This is good value for money. And here are my reasons why. The reason why I believe this Toyota Ego X is good value for money is because essentially, this is a Toyota Ego, but with more components added to it cost of added components there are less equipments inside compared to the normal Ego but then also another important point I considered was that this is an A segment car and in today's generation A segment cars are a little bit more expensive than average and because this is an A segment car I did not have expectations for practicality solutions and family friendliness can be very debatable guys you all be the judge but one thing I have to say is that I really, really like the presentation of the interior. Toyota has stepped up its game big time and also the design is beyond good. I absolutely love it. My opinion of this Toyota Ego X. I love this Toyota Ego X. I really, really do. You know what? I really love this Toyota Ego X because it really has potentials and this is the birth of something different for Toyota in the EU market. Finally, Toyota has achieved more desirability than ever and this is going to put a serious competition in the EU market. This is going to encourage competitors to come up with more interesting options of crossover SUVs, especially in the A segment. The A segment is very important when it comes to budgeting and Toyota has acknowledged this and this is what I call passion. This is what I call the essentials of the A segment in the EU market. Somebody has finally realized how important budgeting really is. Because the most questionable aspect about the generation of today in the automotive industry is that it seems as though that the mass market, the budget market, especially when we're buying cars under 20,000 euros, has been neglected. Everyone has been too focused in the premium market or in the mid-segment market let's say like somewhere 
in this area where we're talking of a, about a car of 30,000 euros or 40,000 euros. But Toyota has woken up to this and they decided to do something about it. And I'm very happy for that. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos that are on the run. Don't forget to check out the links in the description for more interesting videos that could be relevant to this Toyota Ego X. Or if not relevant, perhaps interesting.